Hi there. I'm going to try to move quickly uh, with a, another update here. Uh, I'll call it a World War III update if you want to go that way, uh, because I think this is about some, uh, some events that are actually leading up to World War III. And I'm going to do this quickly, as quickly as I can. First, you remember on August 5th, there was a um, supposed terrorist attack 16 in, in the Sinai Peninsula uh, where 16 Egyptian soldiers were killed by suspected Islamic militants. Uh, these soldiers were buried, I think, on the 7th. This news story report was on the 8th. Uh, then on August 8th, <clears throat> remember that date. It's important. I think it's important at this point. Um, Egypt bombs. Uh, the Sinai Peninsula for the first time uh, since 1973. Uh, first time since the uh, 1973 Yom Kippur War. Uh, this is an act that was made, rendered illegal in 1979 internationally by a peace treaty with Israel that uh, restricts the forces uh, that Egypt can place in the Sinai Peninsula so that there's sort of a buffer between the two countries. Uh, and this also marked the beginning of when Egypt started moving troops into the Sinai, uh, supposedly in order to you know, eliminate these terrorists. Now, move forward. A uh, week and a half after the news, it said, oh, Israel gave approval to Sinai to move their troops in and thinks this is great that they're opposing terrorism. Uh, Sinai is now asking Egypt to withdraw heavy weapons from the Sinai. They're saying, get them out of here. Uh, these are uh, running against the peace treaty. Israel's requested Egypt to pull its heavy uh Weaponry, weaponry, excuse me, away from the Sinai Peninsula after the end of the operations against militants there. Uh, High-ranking Israeli officials told uh, the radio station Friday that Cairo and Tel Aviv continue to communicate about security and political issues, and Israel was following up on concerns over what is happening in the Sinai uh, area. Okay. The Israeli paper said the Camp David Accord stipulated Egypt, the first Arab country to recognize Israel, would not. Uh, would, would not would not to allow would not be allowed uh, heavy weapons including armored vehicles or would not allow would not to allow whatever so uh, to some region of Sinai including Al Arish uh, however uh, recently tens of armored vehicles have arrived in Arish Egypt and Israel ended 30 years of conflict after signing the accord in 1979 uh, which is the one that is currently uh, being violated. Let me see. Next one. Oh, I'm not going to worry about that. Egypt deployed troops in Sinai without Israel's prior approval. In other words, the August 8th invasion of Sinai, uh, supposedly to stop terrorism, was a violation of the treaty and uh, the expl explicitly a violation of the term uh, where it was required to request uh, permission of Israel to do this kind of a thing. So this was an invasion without permission and without uh, uh, an agreement on the part of the relevant parties. The Egyptian army has been deploying large anti-terrorist forces in parts of the Sinai Peninsula without informing Israel in advance. The peace treaty between the two countries limits the Egyptian military presence in Sinai, etc. Okay, so that's a violation of the peace treaty. <laughs> Israel asks Egypt to take armor out of uh, Sinai, uh, Arab paper, Israel was only informed retroactively about the employ uh, deployment of armored, for armored forces in Israel, or in Sinai, excuse me. Cautious suspension, suspense in Israel amid Egyptian president's power play. Uh, this power play after the invasion on August 8th, uh, the president of Egypt, Morsi, overthrew the government, uh, overthrew the uh, long-established military council that was really ruling the country. It was a kind of coup uh, and a major power shift uh, so that now all power is consolidated in the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, who have said, and I've covered this in a previous video, that Israel is their number one enemy and always will be. Okay, so that's just the same thing.
danger to Israeli uh, Israel Egypt ties. Personnel changes in Egyptian military do not bode well for security. Diplomatic relations between Cairo and Jerusalem. So that's again related. Morsi, the president of New Egypt, new president, President Morsi, uh, to Hana, uh, Hanai, Hanai, I don't know. Egypt and Palestine are one. Okay, so here you're seeing new alliances forming and, and more explicit. Egypt reportedly sets up anti aircraft missiles in the Sinai Desert. <laughs> I guess that's to ward off air attacks from the terrorists. Uh, the Islamists, uh, radical Islamists in Sinai, that they are there to attack. Obviously, that's not right. Uh, it's for a different purpose because this whole invasion is not for the same, uh, it's not, not for the stated reason. Uh, Egypt's president to visit China and Iran this month. Uh, visiting Iran is the first time an Egyptian president has done it's the first it's the first time an, an Egyptian president has done this in decades uh, and and uh, now China too uh, which interestingly uh, would be uh, a relevant alliance uh, for a, a major world war now before I go there I'm going to just say all of this is really important and interesting and uh, could just be the beginnings of what leads into an invasion that counts as the uh, beginning of the war. Could actually qualify uh, as the invasion that uh, first initiated the uh, war, albeit a small one and, and slowly developing one. Uh, uh, and that's what I sort of suspect right now. So what, uh, let me restate this. I suspect that what we saw on August 8th uh, was actually uh, a violation of terms of peace between Egypt and Israel, which constituted a new state of war between the countries. Uh, and it's going to slowly develop. Israel's asking them to pull, well, you know, withdraw all their heavy armory. Uh, and, and Egypt almost certainly is not going to do that. Uh, this sort of thing could lead to an escalated war. Uh, and, and I suspect that probably will happen. Uh, can't guarantee that. Uh, but if it does, uh, I also expect that to be uh, the conflict that actually leads to uh, a world war. And let me show you something. If you've followed any of my videos in the past, you know that I've been claiming for a while that uh, the war that we really need to be worried about that's going to happen is in Egypt, and nobody else was following this for a long time. Uh, but I was just taking my cues from Scripture, and I claim that... Uh, you know, in a book of mine, that uh, uh, it'll be an invasion northward of Egypt that begins the war, and it should happen, if my understanding of history is correct, somewhere between 2012 and 2013. So let me show you those really quickly, very quick. Here's from the book. Uh, nope, not there. Here. So I say whether interpretation one or two, this is my book. This is a preview on Amazon. Uh, interpretation one or interpretation two is correct. This must remain not constant. The final war is instigated by the king from the south, probably Egypt. Egypt and its southern allies are subdued by the powerful forces of the desolator. I, my theory there is that would be uh, basically NATO uh, and, and Obama in particular, uh, who then hears very troubling news from the north and east that causes him to respond with great fury uh, to destroy and devote many to destruction. It sets the summary of the final war over three and a half years. Uh, but it begins with a northward move of Egypt, probably against Israel. I say in the book, then I also say in the book, when uh, 2012 to 2013 will be important years to watch. Uh, and the section is talking about that. That would be when we would see the beginning of the war. Oh, here it is. In fact, 2011 year is a year to watch, too, as events that unfold this year, when I published the book early in 2011, will likely... Uh, be the events that lead to the war that escalates rapidly in the latter half of 2012 and the first half of 2013. Okay, now, and then I give this timeline. I'm going to show you the timeline here that I put in the book. Uh, Obama inauguration marks the beginning of the seven years on January 20th, 2009. Seven years later, January 20th, 2016, roughly, uh, would be your... Battle of Armageddon, and the beginning of the war with the Egyptian movement would happen in the middle in 2012. Let me show you the date calendar. If you take 
and then the final day, here's the seven year anniversary of Obama inauguration. January, January 20th, 2016, and you subtract 1,260 days to mark the beginning of the final three and a half years. The beginning date would be August 8th, 2012. The date Egypt invades Sinai, contrary to the terms of peace with Israel. Okay. Um, I'm not guaranteeing that that was the date that it begins, uh, but I am going to I am going to throw it out there and say we should really be monitoring this closely. Uh, things are f falling in place on schedule. Um, in you know, if I'm right. Note I should add something really quickly. Uh, in my book, I'm very careful not to claim to have any certain knowledge of these things, except uh, on this condition that if I understood scripture right, then it would be the case. But I even explain how I could be wrong in an appendix. Okay, I offer alternative interpretations throughout the book. Uh, I try to be very careful here. Um, I'm a reformed Christian. I am not somebody who's going to, who has a tendency or desire. Uh, to, to make any crazy predictions, okay? Uh, that's the name of the book, and you know, maybe it's worth looking into. But either way, uh, thought I'd pass, share this information. Take care.